Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to this video on how to plan a Task 2 essay. This is something it's essential for you to know and I'm going to show you how in easy steps. In this video you'll learn four reasons why you should plan your essay, four simple steps of essay planning, four strategies for generating ideas and a simple four-part essay structure. Each year, many high-level students fail to get the band 7 or 8 score that they're capable of achieving, simply because they didn't plan their Task 2 essay. In case you're one of these people who insist they don't have time to plan, here are four key reasons why you should. 1. Planning saves you time. If you plan your essay before you start writing, you'll already know what you're going to say and won't need to keep stopping to think about the next idea. This means that you'll be able to write much faster than if you don't have a plan. You only need to spend 5 minutes in the planning stage. That leaves a full 35 minutes to write and check your essay. Planning also results in a more relevant answer. Remember, 25% of your marks are for task achievement. This includes answering all parts of the question, presenting relevant ideas that are well developed and having clear supporting points to extend the main idea. Not answering all parts of the question is a particularly common mistake in the IELTS writing task. Part of the planning process involves thinking up ideas to include in your essay. Taking the time to analyse the question and focus on generating a few key ideas with relevant examples will ensure that you answer the question fully. Thirdly, planning results in a better essay structure. Another 25% of the marks are for coherence and cohesion. This includes organising your ideas into a logical order, having a separate paragraph for each main idea and linking your paragraphs appropriately. You can have the best ideas in the world, but unless you can develop them into a well-structured essay, you'll not score highly for coherence and cohesion. The examiner needs to be able to understand what you're saying and see a clear progression of relevant ideas. Without a plan, this is difficult to achieve. Trying to write an IELTS essay without planning it first is like going on a journey without a map. You'll probably reach your destination eventually, but you'll undoubtedly take a random route with a few false turns along the way. It would certainly be extremely difficult for anyone else to follow your meandering path. Spending a few minutes planning your essay will give you an easy to follow map taking you right through from the introduction to the conclusion. This result will be a well structured essay and a very happy examiner. Finally, planning results in fewer grammatical errors. With your ideas and essay structure planned out before you start writing, you'll have more time to focus on getting your grammar right. Fewer grammatical errors means more marks. You should also be left with enough time at the end to check your answer for mistakes and to correct them. Now that you understand why you must plan your Task 2 essay, we're going to look at how to plan it. There are four simple steps to planning a Task 2 essay. 1. Analyse the question. 2. Generate ideas. 3. Record synonyms and 4. Plan the structure. The number one mistake many students make is not answering the question properly. The way to avoid this is to carefully analyse the question before you do anything else. Knowing how to do this is so important that I've written a whole page on it and created a separate video. I've put links to them in the notes at the bottom of this video. Here's a summary of the most important points. Students regularly make these four mistakes. 1. They don't spend time carefully reading and analysing the question. 2. They fail to recognise the type of question being asked. 3. They don't fully understand the question. and 4. They write about the general topic rather than answering the specific question. Fortunately, there's a quick and easy way to analyse and understand Task 2 questions. You just need to identify three different types of words. Topic words, 
are the keywords and instruction words. Here's a typical essay question with the different types of words highlighted. In some poor areas of large cities, people are too afraid to leave their houses at night time due to a fear of crime. What are the causes of crime in these areas and what can be done to tackle the problems? The topic words, in blue, are the ones that identify the general subject of the question. So, this question is about fear of crime. We now need to know what aspect of fear of crime we are required to write about. For this information, we look at the other keywords, the ones I've highlighted in red. The other keywords in the question tell you the specific topic you must write about. They define the opinion stated in the statement. Here they are isolated from the statement. Large cities, poor areas, afraid to leave their houses and night time. These are the only aspects of fear of crime that you should write about. Do not write about crime or fear of crime in general or you'll be given a low mark for task achievement. The instruction words are all the words that come after the question statement. They tell you exactly what the examiner wants you to do. Our sample question is a causes and solutions question. It requires you to give clear ideas on both what causes crime in poor areas of large cities and some possible solutions. 25% of your marks are determined by how well you answer the question. A common mistake is to write about just one side of the issue. Here, for example, just the causes. Or to not fully develop both sides, resulting in an unbalanced essay. Now that you fully understand the question, you must quickly think up some ideas to write about. For this, you need an idea generation strategy that works well for you and that you've practiced beforehand. We all think in slightly different ways. So what works for one person might be completely the wrong method for somebody else. Different techniques can also work well for different question types. So it's worth having two methods that you can use confidently. Then you'll be ready to answer whatever type of question you get. There are four main techniques for generating ideas for IELTS essays. Brainstorming, mind mapping, the friends technique and the examples method. Brainstorming is where you quickly jot down as many related ideas that come into your head as possible. The drawback with this method is that you can end up with lots of ideas, but not enough time to sort them and pick out the most relevant ones before you have to start writing. Mind mapping is similar to brainstorming, but will help you to organise your thoughts as they come to you by relating each thought to a specific part of the question. You can still have a problem with too many ideas, but many students use this method successfully, especially those who already have experience of creating mind maps. The friends technique is the method I prefer. It allows you to take a step back from the stress of the exam situation and think more calmly. Here's how it works. Imagine you're chatting with a friend and they ask you the question in a casual conversation. What answers would you give them off the top of your head? Plan your essay around these ideas. Doing this will help you to come up with simple answers in everyday language, rather than straining your brain to think up amazing ideas using high level language, which really isn't necessary. The example method can sometimes be used on its own, but for many questions, it's a method that will help you to generate ideas to support the main points in your essay and examiners love relevant examples. All you do is to think of specific examples related to the question. These can come from your own experience or be something you've read or heard about. You should be reading newspapers, magazines and topical websites as part of your general exam preparation. So you may well have seen an article, study or report that you could use. You can even make up examples or change real examples to better fit the question. The examiner isn't going to check your facts, but you must, of course, have plausible ones. Our sample question on fear of crime is a topic often covered in the media. Or maybe you know someone who's afraid to go out at night because of local crime. 
Once you've thought of an example, ideas to include in your essay should come to you easily. You'll find illustrations on how to use these four techniques on the pages on individual question types on the website and in related videos. You'll find links to them in the notes below. Before I move on to talking about the structure of your Task 2 essay, I want to look briefly at vocabulary. You need to cover as much as possible in the planning stage, and this includes vocabulary. You don't want to be searching your brain for the right words while you're writing your essay. The writing stage is the time for focusing on grammar and linking your ideas. You don't need to use complex high-level words and phrases to get a high score, but you do need to use appropriate topic-related vocabulary and to avoid repeating the same words many times over. This is particularly true of the vocabulary included in the question, so you need to think about possible synonyms you could use. I'll use the sample question again as an illustration. I've added the colour coding again because it's the key words that you'll want to find alternatives for. Here are a few relevant synonyms. For poor area, you could use deprived neighbourhood or impoverished locality. For city, metropolis or urban area. For night time, after dark. For cause, reason for, source of or origin of. And for what can be done, you could use solution or answer to the problem. Write down synonyms as you analyse the question and choose which ideas you'll include in your essay. The final step in the process of planning your essay is to set out the structure, that is, to organise your ideas so that they flow logically from one to the next and to answer all parts of the question asked. Most essays should have four paragraphs. Each of the five types of question require a slightly different structure which I go into in detail on their individual pages and related videos. Here I'm going to give you a general overview. The paragraphs are an introduction, body paragraph 1, body paragraph 2 and a conclusion. Each paragraph should include specific things. The structure is easy to memorise. Once it's fixed in your mind, all you need to do is to fill in each part with your ideas. With all this planning done, the actual writing of your essay will be fairly straightforward. Pause the video and spend a few moments studying this structure so that you understand each part. There's no need to memorise it yet. That will come when you practice using it. So now you know how to plan a Task 2 essay. This may seem a lot to do in the five minutes planning time you should allow for it, but it is doable. If you get in lots of practice before your exam, you'll be able to do it. Start slowly as you learn how to plan and gradually speed up until you can complete all the steps in around five minutes. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.